you guide people down this path, they can follow it and they can follow it in a way that folks can't follow when you're giving directions in a infrequent manner. So what we've done with Hido is essentially ensure people can take care of themselves without being dependent on the assistance of others. Thank you for tuning in to Growing Your Business with People, a podcast dedicated to CEOs and other business leaders who are looking to grow their business with their biggest and most important investment, people. Here's your host, Jeff Lackey. Today, I am really thrilled to have Charles Gelman, who's CEO and co-founder of the startup company called Hido Health, a company who is working to simplify the patient journey and saving healthcare costs along the way. His NIH funded research in collaboration with Stanford and Rush University have served to simplify the patient journey. And they have served as a foundation for his company where AI assisted in-home robotics is targeted at patients whose medical spend cost is over $100,000 annually and who make up over 39% of the total cost of care structure. He has been interviewed by over 100 different forward-thinking podcasters and regularly publishes a newsletter called The Future of Care. Some of his products work to address adherence. Now, adherence is really close to my heart, having formerly worked at CVS Health, because I understand that this issue is estimated to be costing the U.S. economy a minimum of $300 billion, with a B, dollars per year, because people just don't take their medication according to the prescription regimen, which places them back in the hospital or even worse. Some of his products work to address those uh, those things in, in, uh, as relates to adherence. But prior to Hido, Charles has leadership roles ranging from J&J to Microsoft, all of which have prepared him to lead this very cool healthcare startup, which could be a tremendous asset to patients, their caregivers, and save both patients and payers billions. Welcome to the show, Charles. Thank you, Jeff, for having me. I'm very excited to learn about CVS a little bit more and some of your expertise and insights. Wow. Well, I appreciate that. And I'm, we can't wait to hear more about Hido Health and how you're growing your business with people. So before we get started, I know I gave you a little bit of an introduction, but you know, tell me a little bit about yourself and, and, and how you've come to uh, you know, co-found this organization, this company called Hido Health. Yeah, so like most founders, this was never part of the plan. <laughs> it actually is a happenstance. So when I was in my early 20s, I, in fact, uh, went to the physician, I went to the doctor, and I had pain in my lower right quadrant. And I had a family history of kidney stones, and the physician thought it was also a kidney stone. So go home, relax, you know, drink a lot of fluids, it'll pass some time. But what in fact happened is it was actually a ruptured appendicitis. So my body was going through septic shock. I was misdiagnosed, then later in the hospital and then stayed a, a couple of weeks in the ICU. And that was really my first, you know, true experience within the medical, you know, um, you know, ecosystem. And having to navigate that in my early 20s, which I was exceptionally naive, um, not just in life, but also in a variety of other things, you know, still going to school and still learning. So that was really what started this path within healthcare um, and my experience um, and my, the impact that it had on my life. Wow. So so you've had a, a passion around healthcare because your personal experience being, quite frankly, misdiagnosed based on a history of care and saying there's got to be a better way to be able to uh, to be able to engage patients that is uh, more effective and actually lowers the overall cost of care. That's pretty cool. So uh, yeah. so tell me about your background. Like uh, I know you started out things in, in places like Microsoft and J&J. &J. How did that kind of lead up to, you know, to this place where you you decided to leave the corporate environment and, and, and decide to you know, start a startup? Yeah, so through my experiences, the collection of experiences and conversations that I've had with providers and specialists, not just within defined regions of the country, but seeing all of the countries and seeing 
those types of variable outcomes that exist based upon the different performance metrics. So um, just for your audience to understand in the, the folks that are trying to manage healthcare for their patient populations, it varies. And it varies from one side of town to the next side of town to a city across. And that variability increases the cost of care for your employees. And my insights from working across large organizations is you can pick up on the variabilities, whether it's technology, whether it's people and processes, or whether it's decisions made by executive leaders of how they're going about leading, you know, particular organizations. And that, you know, results in different performance and outcome measures. That's very true. And, you know, it's, it's interesting as I, as I watched um, the healthcare, you know, uh, what they called was the, at one point in time, the retailization of health, healthcare, right? And it went to, you know, from a, a, a very, uh, you know, provider focused economy to trying to create a mass economy that uh, addressed a lot of different folks. And now you're, you're moving from that into what I'll call the mass customization, you know, where you have to still have tailored outcomes because the the cost levels are tremendous there i mean when you're talking about hundred thousand dollars per year of care for a, a patient or more you know you can't you can't just necessarily re rely on completely a retail product you have to have something that actually controls those costs so that uh you know so that outcomes are 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 not wasted you know that cost is not wasted you can't afford to send somebody to the ER for another fifty thousand dollars for one visit, or worse yet, into the into the emergency room uh, and then in the surgical unit, which might be another twenty, thirty, fifty, hundred thousand dollars, right? In in one setting, one visit, you know, and the, that's where you know costs really get out of control. This podcast is brought to you by Paradox AI, also known as Olivia, recruiting's most advanced AI assistant. I use Paradox at my previous organization, and their team helped us create a candidate concierge experience that ensured a fast hiring process that still felt very human. We literally hired hundreds of thousands of people, many of whom were critical healthcare workers needed during the pandemic. She would let them know we had an interview or offer waiting and would help them navigate onboarding processes. Olivia made the experience easy and fast two essential ingredients in recruiting great people. It's not just me. Organizations like McDonald's, General Motors, Unilever, and L'Oreal use this technology to create engaging and fast candidate experiences. Go to Paradox.ai to learn more about the amazing things Paradox and Olivia can do for you. Hello, listeners. As a senior business leader, you're probably struggling with scaling infrastructure like succession, engagement of people, retention, hiring, and even change management. FutureSolve is an HR advisory firm founded with some of the most well-known CHROs in the country. We specialize in helping medium-sized companies and small businesses with their HR strategy. We do this using a blended service of strategy and innovative AI technologies to make an impact on the bottom line. What I found was really interesting was that your focus is on AI robotic care, uh, in-home robotics. And one of the things that you and I talked about is the, the fact that many physicians, well, all physicians, I don't know any that make house calls anymore, really, hardly, uh, really visit their patients in a sterile environment, right? As opposed to into the, into the environment where the patient is 99.9% .9 of their time, which is you know, especially ones who have serious health care issues, they're, they have a large percentage of time in their home. Tell us a little bit about that, that interesting dynamic between the sterile environment and the AI robotics and, and how uh, Hydo Health is trying to bridge that gap. Yeah, so I, I think a, a monumental challenge, not just for providers, but also patients, is that interaction that occurs when you go see your doctor or your nurse or your primary care physician. You have that interaction, and it's in a short window of time. So you walk into an ambulatory clinic or a hospital, and to your point, it is a sterile environment. They have support, but you're walking into their environment, not the environment that's a reflection of some of the obstacles or challenges that you have in your home. So you have that conversation. 
You know, they're medically trained. They went to medical school. They have, you know, many, many years of clinical experience, but you have a highly educated person trying to communicate to a lay person that may or may not understand what they need to do to maintain their health. And that's where I believe a lot of this, you know, kind of starts to unravel because you have somebody telling, you know, what's needed to take care of a complex chronic care disease. And the patient may not actually be able to digest all of that information. So what you do is you give them a stack of sheets with instructions Mm -hmm. and medical terminology. And then you're expecting that this person is going to be able to understand and decipher that information in the comfort of their home. And this is where the disconnect, you know, starts to unravel completely because when you're in that sterile environment, you have that support, you can ask questions, but that's a limited window of time. And the second you walk out, you look in the mirror and it's all dependent on the patient. Wow. That's really powerful. So at that point in time, I was just talking to my wife about this. We have a friend of ours uh, that is a... we refer to her affectionately as grandma. She's not technically my grandmother, but uh, but she's a friend of the family. We call grandma, and uh, and and she, you know, her patient. She needs a patient advocate, right? She needs somebody. She's in her mid eighties. She needs somebody to be at the doctor's office to be able to hear the same things. Because one, she has hearing uh, challenges. Second, she doesn't. She isn't uh, English. Isn't her first language. You know. Third, uh, she is in her 80s, so uh, sometimes, uh, you know, sometimes she has cognitive challenges, understanding between the English and the and other thing and her hearing, really are barriers to her care, and she's dealing with all sorts of issues. And I, I think about like this application to somebody like her saying, you know, wow, wouldn't it be amazing if we actually knew if you know if she was taking her medication now. So just pausing for our, our audience, one of the things I want to clear up is one of the reasons I'm so interested in Hydo Health for you as, as business leaders, one, I think it's a really cool technology and it's really amazing Im- impact that they're having. But you, if you employ people, if you have indiv- individuals on your staff, you realize that actually the healthcare costs of their, uh, for them may be as much as the salaries that you pay out or potentially more. Uh, so what you're, what you're facing as a company, a corporation, if you have a large organization at all, or even a small organization, your healthcare costs are probably a significant portion of your cost structure. And one of the reasons I want to talk to you about Hyo Health is two parts. One is to let people know about what this capability is. Second is I'd like to, I want to really delve in with Charles uh, at uh, a little bit later in the program, how he's growing his business with people and talk to, you know, talk to you about how, some of his secrets for success and how he's, uh, how he's engaging his team. So, so tell us a little bit about the AI robotics side. How does this work? How does, uh, you know, how, how does kind of like, you know, how does your process work in, in getting medications and, and driving adherence different than maybe what we might see other places? Mm-hmm. So Haido specializes in AI assisted robotics, and it really comes down to behavioral modification. And there's a, a term called classic conditioning, which basically means that if you're able to repeat the same thing in chaining technology, not to be confused with blockchain, uh, chaining technology is step one, two, three, four, five. You guide people down this path. They can follow it and they can follow it in a way that folks can't follow when you're giving directions in a infrequent manner. So what we've done with Hido is essentially ensure people can take care of themselves without being dependent on the assistance of others. And that's what makes things so exciting because we've validated And as crazy as this is going to sound to the audience, patients with dementia, we're doing a study right now with Rush University where they're able to set up the device. They're able to dispense medications with a transparent pill cup, and they're able to take the medications while their caregiver sits next to them without getting directions from anyone. So I want everybody to absorb that. Patients with dementia can take medications unassisted with a device that helps them because it can retain that information knowledge for them so they can care for themselves with independence and freedom. Hmm. 
the way I kind of think about it, Charles, is this, like right now today, we're basically been given Ikea instructions on how to build some furniture, right? And that, that seems like a, a massive undertaking for somebody who even, I have a wood shop in my basement and sometimes Ikea instructions are, uh, are a, bit from, a bit much for me even, right? But now we're transitioning it into a simple one, two, three, four step process that even a person with dementia could literally build this furniture because it's that simple. You've made it this simple that they could they could put this thing together. In this case, they're taking their medication, but it is making it so simple that they can do it in a way that is consistent and it is measurable and trackable. And and there's tell us about uh, one of the things that I was really curious about when we talked live is is the fact that you actually use um, a video uh, interface that allows you to. Uh, to to actually see the patient being able to take their medication so that you can validate that they that they actually took the medication that was dispensed to them how does that mm-hmm. how does that work exactly yeah so i'll go into that in just a moment but i'd like to you know talk a little bit about your diy experience versus ai so i think that's a fantastic right. subject because to your point jeff some people will be able to build furniture they have a workshop they have the cognitive you know, aptitude in order to do that. And that might be, you know, a, a big proportion of the public. But the, the issue is that 6 billion prescriptions go out each year and over half of those medications that are paid for aren't taken. Hmm. So if half the medications that are going out aren't taken, we have a substantial issue on our side. So how do we fix what's going on when people have access to the medications, but they simply aren't taking them as intended because at home they have plastic pill boxes that work for the DIYers, but some people require AI assistance where the Hido device does do that medication dose by dose recording with a transparent cup. And the reason why we do that is for the patients that you know impact the health system Immensely. So let's you just look at the top 1% of patients that cost 40 cents of every single employer dollar on a health plan is due to managing 1% of your employees. So what happens when you manage the 1%? And I'll let the wow. entire audience think about that. Big. What do you th- yeah, at that point in time, I mean, if, you, if you're thinking, so as a business leader, if you had 1% of your customers actually driving over 40% of your cost structure. You know, you might think differently about how you how you manage and and work with those customers, right? You know, especially if they were only representing, you know, again, 40% of your overall revenue, but they're driving, you know, they're driving 1% of your cost was or 1% of your customers were driving 40% of your cost, that would be a real problem for you. you know, you'd have to think differently about how you do this. That wraps up this episode of Growing Your Business with People. I'm your producer, Madison, and we hope you enjoyed this. If you did, please feel free to leave a comment, like this video, and subscribe to our channel so you never miss out on the latest uploads. For more information about this episode or any of our previous episodes, please visit our website, growingyourbusinesswithpeople.com, or follow us on social media for access to bonus content. We'll leave links in the description below. We hope you join us for the next one.